All right, so President's Day is right around the corner. So we're gonna make the dessert that had Abe Lincoln keep coming back for more. We already know that George Washington loved barbecue and we've made Abe Lincoln's famous gingerbread men, but there's another one of Lincoln's favorites that we've just been jonesing to make. Mary Todd Lincoln's famous white almond cake. Hey there, I'm Sola L. Whaley, and this is Ancient Recipes with Sola. In each episode, we take a dish you may recognize and attempt to recreate one of the oldest versions of it to ever exist. So it's a little cooking, a little history, and a whole lot of me. What's not to love? Now, Abe Lincoln famously had a huge sweet tooth. Like legit, the menu for his second inauguration had more sweets on it than actual food. And this is our second Lincoln recipe, and they're both sweets. So I think that tells you something. Mary Todd made this recipe and dessert iconic. She made it for Abe when they were dating, and he loved it so much, he asked her to make it for dignitaries and visitors to the White House when he was president. I don't know about you, but I just love getting into the mindset of these iconic historical figures through their palate. So I'm really excited to find out what Mary Todd and Abe were just raving about in the 1800s. Mary Todd loved to host parties and usually brought her A game when it came to the desserts. Some of them were just small berries and cream parties. You know, just how you do. One of her parties in their home in Springfield had up to 500 people invited, but only around 300 people showed up. That buffet to celebrate Abe's second inauguration that we mentioned didn't begin until midnight and had 37 different types of dessert served to over 300 people. We'll get into this lavish inauguration more later because it devolved into a bit of a food fight. Before I get baking, I just wanna let you know, we are mashing up a couple of historical almond cake recipes to get close to what Mary Todd White have made. There's no exact recipe card with the one that she specifically made. And when you look it up online, there's a lot of modernized versions of this cake and we wanna go for the ancient one. So first up, I've got some blanched almonds that I'm gonna grind in the mortar and pestle to make my own almond flour. So one of the recipes we used as inspiration for this cake comes to us from Eliza Liesel's 75 receipts for cakes, pastries, and sweet meats. Um, but in that recipe, she uses bitter almonds. We didn't go for bitter almonds because in large quantities, it can be poisonous. So we're going for blanched almonds instead, and we're adding a little bit of almond extract, which gives us some of that bitter almond flavor. You know, this is, this is old hat now. I will always be mashing things on ancient recipes. So I'm just doing a few almonds at a time because it can really easily turn into a paste and we are going for more of an almond flour. I imagine like by grinding your own almonds, it's gonna be a lot like more almondy. I feel like the almond flour from the store, it can be very, very stale. Mary Todd first had this almond cake in her hometown of Lexington, Kentucky. A baker named Monsieur Giron made it for the Marquis de Lafayette when he visited Kentucky in 1825. And the Todds loved this cake so much, they begged for the recipe, and now, boom, it's history. Famous, they did this. Mary Todd was like a huge fan of like French culture. She could speak fluent French. She was a big like Francophile. I was too, growing up. All I wanted to do was cook French recipes because everyone told me that's like, you know, the highest apex of cuisine. But now I'm older and I've learned. It's not true. This cake's gonna be great though. <laughs> All right, I feel like this batch is nice and fine and I'm gonna transfer it to a bowl and just keep grinding the next batch. We're just gonna keep going a little bit at a time so that it doesn't get too pasty. There are a lot of cakes nowadays that have like these similar ingredients, like a financier, another French cake that I'm a really big fan of. It has almond flour and a lot of egg whites, but I think that one has like brown butter. And this cake, we're gonna have like whipped egg whites in it, so it's gonna be really light and airy. A financier, it has a lot of almond flour and egg whites, but it's like really dense. It doesn't have any whipping. But I imagine we're gonna have like similar flavor profiles. So we've got our almonds all ground into a flour. Next, I'm gonna cream the butter and sugar by hand. But first of all, back then, sugar didn't look like this. Sugar came in these cones called sugar loaves 
and you would actually have these special shears to cut off as much sugar as you need, and then you gotta grind it up. It didn't come like already granulated. Wow, we're so lucky. They, there was so much smashing back then. So I have some room temperature butter here, and we're gonna beat together the butter and sugar until it's nice and fluffy. This is a really important step to help like give the cake a lot of volume. You know, you wanna aerate it. So I'm gonna start with half the sugar in the butter, and then we're gonna use the other half for whipping up our egg whites. There's a lot of like whipping, creaming, eggs. So this is definitely a dessert for like people who are more well-to-do because of how much time it takes to make it and how expensive the ingredients are. But Mary came from a well-off family, so it makes sense that this recipe would be accessible to her. Mary was actually really well-educated and even fluent in French, and she was just really into French things. Like this cake comes from a French baker who made it for a famous French colonial, and one of the recipes that we're pulling as inspiration for this cake from 1828 was originally called French almond cake. So I think that's helping us build a better picture of who Mary was. She liked the finer things in life. Even starting with like blanched almonds, it's a lot of work to blanch your almonds. There's like so much labor in this. So, usually when I cream together butter and sugar, I do it in a mixer with paddle attachment. I actually haven't creamed anything by hand since I was a child. <laughs> I mean, I got my first mixer when I was like 12 years old. It was like the most important thing in my life. So, this is gonna, I'm gonna just get in here. What happens when you're creaming together butter and sugar is that the sugar kind of like, it, it, sugar's pointy and sharp, you know what I mean? So it like stabs the, the fat in the butter and, and breaks it apart so it can like kind of form these little air bubbles that help like aerate the cake. There are a lot of cakes, like original pound cakes, didn't have any leavening in it. It was just leavened by this creaming process. So it's a very important step that you can't skimp on. It's also really important when you're creaming butter that you start with butter at the right temperature. If your butter is really cold, no matter how much you whack it around with a paddle, it's never gonna get fluffy. So we're gonna see it's actually gonna lighten in volume, lighten in color. I'm gonna get sweaty. So there was a cake on the menu for Lincoln's second inauguration called Almond Sponge, and it was likely very similar to this one. We keep talking about this inauguration because it was crazy. Abe and Mary made their guests wait until they arrived at 10.30, and then they didn't open the buffet until midnight. Maybe this was part of their plan, because when they opened up that buffet, it was complete chaos. People were just like loading up their plates. Men were carrying the plates high up above their head because there wasn't any room. It was started to spill everywhere, and it kind of just turned into a food fight. The New York Times even reported on this, and they said, in less than an hour, the table was a wreck. Positively frightful to behold. I feel good about my manual creaming. You can see it's like really fluffy, light in color. That's what we want. And at this point, the butter's just starting to melt, so I'm gonna stop. So, next, our wet stuff. Here I've got some milk, and to the milk I'm gonna add our almond extract, which is gonna give us that nice bitter almond flavor. Mary Todd would have pretty likely had vanilla extract because it was invented in 1847. So ploop right in there. And now we're gonna sift our flour. I think this is gonna be like a really light, delicate cake. There's so much creaming, there's folding, there's whipping, and now sifting. So here I've got my flour. I know like I've heard people say that you have to sift your flour because there's bugs in it. That's totally not true. You need to sift your flour to like aerate it. I mean, maybe back then there were also bugs in it. I don't think that's the primary reason. Okay, now, they did not have baking powder back then. Baking powder wasn't invented until 1856, and it didn't start showing up in recipes until 1870. So instead, we're gonna use a combo of baking soda and cream of tartar. Baking soda is gonna give us that basic part, the alkaline part, and then cream of tartar is an acid, which is pretty much like what baking powder is. Baking powder's got the acid and the base in there with a little bit of cornstarch to like keep it all from clumping. And now we're gonna sift that together. I haven't used one of these sifters in a really long time. It makes me feel like I'm at somebody's grandmother's house, um, but not mine, because my grandmother didn't sift flour. We come from a roti household. You don't need to sift your flour for that. I just feel really festive using this. It's like snow. 
I think I want to get one of these just for fun. We have sifted, we have creamed. Now we're gonna whip. So here I've got some egg whites. There's no yolks in this cake. So I think it's gonna stay really nice and white. Yolks add richness, but they also add like a nice yellow color. I think the no yolks is also gonna keep it like a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna add the remaining sugar to whip our whites. Sugar really helps um, when you whip whites, they have a tendency to like dry out really easily if you're not whipping with sugar. So the sugar kind of just like gives you a little bit more room for air so you don't over whip. I've also heard a lot of people say that whipping your egg whites in copper helps them reach stiff peaks more easily. But nowadays, we all just whip with a machine, so it doesn't really matter. So there is an obvious pull to presidents here in the States. But are there any other historical figures whose food you want to recreate? There has to be, right? Drop it in the comments and let us know. Maybe you'll inspire another ancient recipe. There's a lot of footage on the internet of me whisking egg whites by hand, and I don't know why this keeps happening to me. <sighs> egg whites by hand. I think, should we get GIF in here? Can GIF whip? GIF assist. <sighs> yes, please. You got this. I believe in you. So we want, the goal is to be able to like flip the bowl over your head and not lose any egg whites. That should be the final test before we split. We don't even have a soft peak yet. We're activating tall gif. Whoa, this is a new addition to the team. <laughs> you don't want to get all of this? <laughs> all right, you want to tap out? I don't know how the French did it. They have so many whipped egg white desserts, macarons, uh, lady fingers, every single sponge cake. So we actually had to pass it around the set and everyone took a turn helping whisk because it was too much for anyone to handle, but we did it. We finally got there. We have peak. This is everyone's hard work coming together. And we know that it's there because I can do this. Applause. The applause is for everybody. Everybody had to help with this one. Okay, so now we're gonna bring it all together. All of that hard work is coming together. So here I've got my creamed butter and sugar. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add the dry mixture. So this is our flour that we sifted with the cream of tartar and baking soda. And we're gonna add the flour a third at a time, alternating with the milk. So the reason why you do this is because you can really easily like overwhelm the mixture. Pretty much all cake batters are an emulsion. So if you add too much dry or wet at once, you're gonna break the emulsion. And then when you bake your cake, it's gonna kind of feel a little bit dry and grainy and tough. So even today, usually these kind of cakes that have wet and dry, you add the wet and dry alternating. So I'm gonna add a little bit of milk. Let me stir it up. I do like, my favorite tool is a rubber spatula. And I do miss that. I don't actually use wooden spoons at home at all. That's all they had. They didn't have heat-proof skillets, flexible heat-proof silicone yet, right? I think it's my favorite thing. Okay, so once it's incorporated, we go back in. You just want to mix it until it's evenly incorporated. You don't want to overmix because it's going to get tough. I really like the taste of almond extract, so I'm, I'm definitely going to like this cake. And now it's more special because we all helped make it. Everybody. Everyone's arm is sore together. Not just me and Gif. Okay, second third of milk going in. Okay, so the last third of flour is going in. Now that second inauguration I told you about, it's really different from the first inauguration where all he had was soup, meat, potatoes, and of course dessert, blackberry pie. He really changed over those four years, you know? Going from like the humble staples to a dessert buffet. You know, the presidency, I hear it changes you. I, I wonder if he aged too. I feel like every president gets really old in office. All right, that last bit of dry is mostly incorporated. We're gonna add our last bit of wet and then we're gonna fold in 
those egg whites that everyone took so much care to whip, and that's gonna like lighten up our whole batter. Oh, and we're gonna add our almond flour. I'm gonna switch to a folding motion now. And we're gonna fold in our almond flour. And I'm gonna scrape down the sides. We don't wanna lose any bit of this cake, you know? Almond flour going in. Almond flour kind of, it's like interesting, we call it flour, but it actually is very like, it's not very absorbent compared to like a regular flour. So I think it's gonna kind of make the cake maybe a little bit dense and tender at the same time. Okay, almond flour in, now our egg whites. The egg whites are super light, our cake batter is super dense, so whenever you're combining these two things that have like really different densities, you gotta go slowly. So we're gonna start by mixing in a third of the egg white. We're not gonna be like delicate here for the first bit. We're just gonna vigorously mix it in to just lighten the batter, and then we're gonna switch to folding. We're just trying to bring the two very dense mixtures. Like, we're trying to like meet in the middle because this is very dense and this is very light. So they don't really want to combine. Okay, so now I'm gonna be a little bit more delicate with our next two rounds of egg white. Okay, now we fold. Folding means we're gonna cut down the middle and then you turn the bowl while flipping over half of the mixture over itself. And you just repeat, just like that. Cut and turn, cut and turn. And we're gonna stop before it's fully mixed because we have more folding to do so that little bit will get evened out eventually. And now I'm gonna add the last bit of egg white. We're in the home stretch, guys. All right. I wanna make sure I get every single bit of this because we worked so hard to whip this. Okay, all of that egg white, final fold. And you can see it like gradually as we added each portion of egg white, it really lightened up. Now at this point, I'm gonna try and make sure we don't have any streaks of egg white. If you do, what can happen is you can just have this, this pocket of dough that just like explodes out of the pan. A lot of the Mary Todd almond cakes nowadays use a bunt pan, but that wasn't invented until 1950. So we're gonna go with the simple round cake instead. And I'm gonna coat this in butter and flour to make sure that a cake comes out. Nowadays, I like line every cake pan with butter, parchment, then butter and flour because like the last thing you want is for it to not come out. But they probably didn't have parchment, right? Parchment is paper that has silicone like impregnated into it. If they didn't have spatulas, I feel like they probably didn't have parchment. Okay, we have our layer of butter. I always butter with my hands because you lose a lot of butter to the paper towel or like whatever if you use something else. I know it's a little messy, but you save butter. Butter's expensive. I'm just gonna dump this flour right in there and we're gonna tap our tin around to evenly coat the bottom and sides. You wanna tap it firmly because you don't want like a big clump of flour anywhere because it's gonna bake up and taste like floury on the outside. So we just need a thin, even coat. I'm gonna tap out the excess in here. We did it. Our pan is prepared. It's time. I've never worked so hard to make a cake before. <laughs> okay, here we go. Please. Be delicious. I'm, I have high hopes. I, I have high expectations. Mary and Abe have really like set me up to expect this to be like life changing. I'm gonna even this out, and then we bake. We bake and we dine. Do you think we could set up a buffet with 36 other desserts? No. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> Okay, our cake has totally cooled and it's finally time to taste. I'm gonna flip it out. We really like well coated the pan with butter and sugar, so I don't think we're gonna have a problem with it coming out. Oh yeah, I heard that plop. All right, 
It looks like cake. Success. Okay, so for a final finishing touch, I'm gonna dust it with some confectioner sugar. Looks very dainty, very French. Let's, let's see how this is. All right. It feels very tender just from cutting it. All right, cross section time. Whoa, hey, that's a really nice crumb. Really nice tight crumb, but still it looks like it's gonna be like open and tender. No big like air bubbles. So we make, did a good job mixing it. it. Smells really good. I can definitely smell the almond extract. Okay, let's see. Let's see if this was worth all of that work. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very light, very tender. Really like delicate floral aroma from the almond extract and the vanilla. But the texture is really nice. It's like, it's very, very tender. And I get why they're so into this cake because back then you had to work for it. And I think this is actually worth it. It's really buttery like a pound cake, but super, super tender from those egg whites. No, this is really good. And actually, now you have a mixer. You're not gonna cream or whip by hand. So I think this is totally worth it. Like you should actually just go make this exactly how it is. I think this is really good. Hmm. 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 I'm not actually a cake person. I really like making cake, but I'm more of a pie person. But I just realized we, this is our first cake we've made. I don't think it's disappointed at all. If there's like any historical cakes that you think would be really interesting or have a cool story, let us know, because I think it's time that we make more cakes. We made a lot of pie. We made cheesecake, but that doesn't count. Well, this is really tasty. I think I'm gonna make this again. I feel like I'm gonna fold this into my cake baking repertoire. I think this is really good. You guys should all try it. Use a mixer or get a whole crew to help you whip the eggs. If you like this episode, be sure to like and subscribe. And if there's any ancient or vintage recipe you wanna have us try out, drop it in the comments. And you know, we've got a whole bunch of episodes now that are up, so you know, take a look back and see what we've done. Check them out, see if you missed any, and I'll see you next time here.